Okay, we're going to do a walkthrough of the first hundred or so lines of the Merchant's Prologue and Tale. That's going to mean the Merchant's Prologue here, which is the Merchant talking to the other pilgrims who are all on their way to Canterbury um, before he tells his tale. His prologue is quite a short one, um, they vary in length. Others, like, such as um, the Wife of Bath, um, they're quite long, but the Merchant's Prologue is short. So we'll have the prologue, and then we'll have what I'm calling his false start to the tale, um, because he he does make quite a prompt start with his tale, but then almost immediately he kind of gets sidetracked with um, this big extended gloss, ironic gloss, of um, of the subject of marriage. So you'll see. So we're going to cover the prologue, and then that false start, and that'll be the end of the video, and then I'll do a second video on con continuing with the tale. So here we go. The prologue of the merchant's tale. He begins. Weeping and wailing, cara, cara and other sorwe, he no enoch on even and a morwe. So of weeping and of wailing and of care, or care or, or trouble, worry and other sorrow, sorrows, I know enough. I am very familiar with these things. Um, on even and o, and a morwe in the evening, and a morwe. So we say tomorrow. Tomorrow means the next day. Morrow actually means day. So by day or night, I am very familiar with um, all these uh, with the misery basically that attaches to marriage. Quod the merchant. And so don other more that wedded bane, and so do. Many others, more means more, so others more, that wedded been. So do others who, many others who've been married. It raw that it be so. I believe that this is so. For, well I would. Well I know. You need to get to know that word. That's just one of those words you need to learn. Would means no. Uh, just as trow or trower means believe. Those are just two you need to learn really. For, well I would, well I know, it fareth so with me, it fell. How, uh, so when we ask, how, he, how, is, how is she faring, how, how, do you, how did you fare, how did you get on? So that's how I'm, that's how it goes with me. Marriage is misery. I have a with, the worst that may be. Clear enough. For though the feigns to hear a coupled were, she walled him Overmatch, I dar well swear. For, now this is slightly tricky for beginners. Let's just go through this. For though, for though, let's just call that though at the moment because it looks like though. For though the fiend, the devil, to her a coupled were. So although the devil was coupled with her, as in in marriage, she would. You can see the word there. It looks like would. She would him. Overmatch. She would overmatch him. In other words, outmatch him. She would be more than a match for him. Uh, I dare well swear. I dare well swear. So, I dare swear, I'd be prepared to swear that although the fiend uh, was married to my wife, she would overmatch him. She would outmatch him. Now that's causing us problems because grammatically, in, in modern English, that that sounds wrong. So, although she was married to him, he would, she would overmatch him. Um, it's a bit confusing, and so we just need to use our common sense here. If you're reading Chaucer, and 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 sort of pinpoint uh, what's causing the grammatical confusion here, and it, it's the word though, because it's just being used in a slightly different way from how we use it now. And the the translation really is, um, it, rather than though, it's if. So what he actually means is, even if the the devil were married to my wife, she would be more than a match for him. That, that makes much more sense. That's how terrible his wife is, apparently. Um, so yeah, this is this is a misogynist text, and that's the whole point of it. It doesn't mean that Chaucer was a terrible misogynist. It means that he is, um, he, he's the merchant is, and that he's he's playing on the misogynist tradition. Right? It is a tradition, or it was a tradition. Um, in the in the late fourteenth century, when when this was written, um, so I've got a terrible wife. He's saying, "What 
What should I to rehearse in special? What should I to rehearse is to go over. So what should I tell you especially? In particular, ir her hier malis. Oh, we understand malice. Um, what should I tell you in particular about how how malicious, how terrible she is? She is a shrew at all. She is a shrew. She's a total shrew. Shrew is a misogynist word meaning a um, a woman who is who is scolding and and difficult and um, a, 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 a busybody at home. All those kind of stereo stereotypical anti-feminist um, ideas coming in there. There is a long and large uh, difference betwixt Griselda's greater passions and of me with the passing cruelty. There's a long, that's clear enough, there's a big difference between Griselda, who's the, the character from the previous tale uh, told by the Clark. So there's a big difference between her. So the um, the wife in the Clark's tale was um, uh, was was a heroine, uh, and uh, and uh, uh, she she uh, an excellent model of of wifehood, I guess, um, or at least that's how the merchant has has seen it, and um, so he's saying there's a big difference between her and my wife, and of me with the passing cruelty of my wife, the passing cruelty, and you, passing, hmm, what you mean? What transient? So passing, we when we use it today, it normally means you know it'll pass. It means transient, um, not permanent. And so, and that doesn't make sense here, does it? Um, because he's he seems he, the the picture he is painting for us is one of endless torment being married. So it suggests we need to we need to do something with passing. And what he actually means is surpassing, passing. Uh, so extreme cruelty, her cruelty which passes all other things. So there's a huge difference between what you've heard about Griselda and the the extreme cruelty of my wife. Were I unbounden, were I unbound, were I not bound by marriage? Also mut i they. If I weren't married, uh, also must I, must I be, also sure actually about that might have to come back to that um let's try not get bogged down let's let's just keep going um it would never act common in the snare so if if i were unmarried it would never act common in the snare i i would i would never come near i would avoid the snare the trap of marriage where wedded men live in sorrow and care we wedded men live in sorrow and, and care misery trouble a sire who so will try who anyone who will Whoso, whosoever, anyone who will try, and he shall find, he shall find, is say a sooth. Be, uh, be St. Thomas of Inde. Uh, so, uh, try who, test this if you like, uh, and you'll find I'm telling the truth. And then he swears by St. Thomas of India, just to try and give himself a bit more credibility. Classic rhetorical device by one of Chaucer's pilgrims. As for the more part, uh, is say and at all. So he, he just qualifies his position there and says, well, you'll, you'll mostly find that. Maybe not everybody. God shield. Shield. God shield. God uh, God forbid uh, that it should so befall. Heaven forbid that everybody should end up in, in this position. Ah, good sort host. Uh, good host. The host is the, the host of the pilgrims on their way to Canterbury. So it's just... Chaucer again branching out into, into this world that he's created around the tales. Good sir host, I have a wedded bay these months two, uh, and more nat pardi. I've been married uh, these two months, and 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 more nat pardi. Only two months. After all that, he's only been married two months, uh, and this is already his his opinion of marriage. Pardi. Uh, that's a sort of corruption of of the French par dieu. Uh, so by God, it's a he's is a form of swearing basically, another sort of rhetorical device. Um, and yet it row I believe, he that all his live withless hath been, though that men wold him rive unto the hurt, ne could in no manner tellen so much much al sorrow, as I now here could tellen of me withes corsedness. So, I believe. 
um, that that Dumas, he that all his life uh, withless have been who's been without a wife withless sorry that's quite a, a weird word that but if you look at it with Liz wifeless so the man that's been wifeless that's been a bachelor all his life um though though that men would him riv onto the hurt so although men could riv is that mock him unto the heart what for not being married let's say it's that again let's try and not get bogged down so although something unfortunate might happen to him he might be mocked um for for not having a wife ne could in no manner tell him so he he could not which also likes these double negatives it just ne could neither could he in no manner he there's no way he could tell as in tell the story of so much sorrow as i now here could tell of my wife's cursedness no quod or host now said the host march on so god your bless sin ye so much all known of that art um so he, this is the host of the pilgrims he now talks to the merchant um sin ye since you so you know so much of that art of that matter full heartily i pray you tell us part so please tell us get on with your story gladly quod he gladly said the merchant but of min own sore for sorry hurt he tell me na more so he says i'll happily tell my story um, but of my own sorry heart i will tell no more i'm not going to whinge any more about my own misfortunes so that's the prologue um and now he makes a start but as we'll see he, uh, he doesn't get very far be before he gets bogged down um, in strangely in a passage where he sings the praises of wives which has to be ironic and unless unless you take the view that in fact this this that that fragment of Chaucer's writing is not in fact the merchant talking but is is January talking January is the character inside the merchant's story, um, then it's got to be a sort of ironic gloss. A gloss is an interpretation or, or a um, marginalia, a, an addition by the merchant. Um, I'll, we'll make a start. Hopefully you'll see what I mean. Um, so here begins the merchant's tale. Willem, meaning once, Willem there was dwelling in Lombardy. Lum, Lum, Lombard, that's Lombardy, so... Um, in the north of Italy. It's Milan is in Lombardy. Um, Willem there was dwelling in Lombardy a worthy nicht, a, a worthy knight that was born of Pavia. Pavia is a town near Lombardy. Uh, sorry, is a town in Lombardy. It's near Milan. In which he lived in great prosperity. Hopefully that's clear. And sixty year a wifless man was he. Uh, and so that's Hopefully clear as well. He was with. There's that word again. Withless. He was. He. He was single, or without a wife anyway. Um, for sixty years, he lived to the age of sixty as a bachelor, and followed I his bodily delight on women. There as was his appetite. So he followed I as in always his bodily delight, delight on women. So he he had plenty of sex by the sounds of things. He he took he he had plenty of bodily delight. Um, with women, um, there as uh, there as was his appetite, as he fancied it, basically as as um, as as his appetite determined. As dawn, these fallers that been secular, so just as these these secular fools um, do. Uh, so there's a, there's a moment of sort of um, virtue from <laughs> from the merchant here, um, calling. Uh, yes, um, sort of referring to this this knight as a sort of a sort of fool. Um, so either he's either he's being ironic or he's being a bit of a hypocrite. Um, something to think about. And one that he passed said sixty year, when um, when he got sixty, were it for holiness or for dotage. So whether it whether this was an account of of holiness or dotage indulgence. It 
cannot say. He hasn't got to the main bit of his sentence yet. Um, so when he got 60, whether it was out of a sense of um, spirituality or indulgence, he cannot say. He doesn't know. But such a great courage had this nicht to be a wedded man. So this, at the age of 60, 60 um, this, um, the knight had a great, um, well, a courage, uh, a, a sort of, he was moved to get to get married, to be a wedded man. That, so he had such a great sort of inspiration, I guess, to, to suddenly be married. Um, that die and nicht, he doth, he doth all that he can to Spain, where he nicht wedded be. So he had such inspiration to be married when he got to the age of 60 that day and night he did everything that he could uh, to Spain to um, to form an idea. I mean, that literally means to, to spy, to, to catch sight of where he might, where did be, what, what, where the ceremony would be. I don't think so. I think that means, you know, to, to find himself a bride, basically, to find to whom he might be might get married. Praying uh, our Lord to grant on him that he might honest know of hilke blissful lith that is betwixt an husband and his wife. So he was inspired and praying to um, to our Lord, to God, to grant him um, that he might he might um, once, once in his life, no, of thilke, thilke means, well, the like, you can almost see the word in there, the like, that the kind of blissful life that exists, um, that is, that is betwixt, between a husband and a wife. So praying to the Lord um, to, to, to grant him, uh, to enable him to know the, um, what it's like, the bliss of being married. And for to live under that holy bond, this is still his his prayer to the Lord to um, to let him know what it's like to be married, and and to live under that holy bond, to live under the holy bond of marriage, with which that first God, man, and woman bond. So to live under the same holy bond that God first found man and woman. None other lift said he is worth a bane for wedlock is so easy and so clean that in this world it is a paradise this said this old nicht that was so wis so no other life said he is worth a bean literally um, for wedlock is so easy and so clean that's an odd by by today's standards that would be an odd word to um to describe wedlock which is the condition of being married uh, perhaps uh, pure i guess is the it, it w might be a, a, a good way of, of translating that um and it's so easy so um comfortable and, and pure that it's a paradise in this world and that's what this this old knight said that was so wis um presumably a bit of irony at the end from the merchant and at this point the merchant starts to provide his own gloss for for january's what well, his own gloss of january's decision and so he he now talks generally about about marriage and he goes on for quite a long time so that's why I say he, he makes a full start of his story because the rest of this video is now about this this kind of general speech he makes about about marriage which is very much goes against the grain of everything he said in his prologue and so most people's reading of it is that he's just being heavily ironic here so here we go the, the story pauses at this point. The knights decided to get married, but now the merchant starts to provide his own ironic gloss. A gloss is a sort of a, an interpretation or an annotation of, um, of, of what's happened in the story. 
and it begins with his first general declaration in praise of wives. I've just tried to split this up into sections which I've given you in the margin because it is a bit rambling and, and unstructured, this, this kind of large diversion of the merchants. And that's, that's perhaps Chaucer just, well, it's just him kind of, it, it's a bit of realism from him, I guess. The merchant is, well, a bit of a rambler. So, here we go. And certainly, says the merchant, as soth as true, that's another word that you just need to learn, soth means truth, and certainly, as soth as God is king, to tack a whiff, it is a glorious thing, and namely, when a man is old and hoar, uh, so especially when a man is old and hoar means white, white-haired, than is a whiff the fruit of his trezor, then the wife is the jewel in the crown, the, the, fr the fruit means the the best part, really, of, of, of his trezor. Um, so especially if you're old, the wife is really the jewel in the crown, apparently. Than shall te take a young whiff and a fair. So in, in, in that case, you should take a, a young and beautiful wife. Well, good luck with that. Um, nice to have the choice, I guess. Um, nice to have the option, is what I mean. Um, on which... He micht engenderen him an heir. Um, so, engender to bring into being. So, through which, through this young, beautiful wife, um, he might um, have a, a, an heir, uh, have, have a child, uh, an heir to his to his estate. And led his life in love and in solace. Lead his life in love and um, comfort. Whereas... So by contrast, these ba bacheleres sing alas. So by contrast, bachelors, they, they sing alas, apparently. When that they finden any adversity in love, which nis but childish vanity. So by contrast, bachelors sing alas when they find any adversity and trouble in love, um, which, is, which is just childish, um, frivolous nonsense and truly it sit well to be so and that's the way it should be it sit well it um that's the way it should be that that bachelors uh, have often pain and woe on brutal ground they build and brutalness they find when they when when they wane a sickness so um bachelors build on brittle hard ground and and hardness is what they end up with. Is they they hide, find hardness when they wane a sickness, when they want security or sureness. They live, but as a brid or as a beast. So this this section is comparing the married with the unmarried. If we're trying to give it a bit of structure, that's kind of the 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 the, the substance of some of this first praise of this first bit of praise of um, of. Of being married, they find that when they uh, so when they want sureness, they live but as a brid or a beast, as a bird or a beast, in liberty and under non arrest, uh, there as a wedded man in his estate. So they live in freedom and under non arrest, uh, well, um, arrest to, to stop, so no one's stopping them. Doesn't sound so bad, I guess. Um, thereas, so back to back. Thereas is the opposite of whereas. So we're back to the wedded man now. Thereas a wedded man in his estate, in his situation, liveth a, a, a life blissful and ordinate, uh, blissful and uh, provided for. I think I want to check that one. Um, under the yoke of marriage, ibond. Um, so there's a little bit of there's a little bit of prejudice against marriage just creeping into the merchant's irony. Uh, so the yeah the merchant's irony here, uh, referring to marriage as a yoke, um, in that the yoke is what you put around the head of an ox when it's going to pull your plow. So usually, usually if you're yoked to something, it makes you a slave. So it's just a, 
things, uh, a subtle undermining of his ironic, well not that subtle I guess, an undermining of his ironic position in that yoke there. Um, well may his heart in love and bliss abound. Well may his heart in love and bliss abound. Um, for who can be so buxom as a wife? Buxom here actually means obedient. Who can be so buxom, so obedient as a wife? Who is so true and eggs so intentive to keep him sick and whole as is his maker? Slightly tricky here. As you can see, it's a rhetorical question. I mean, generally, he's just saying, what can be more great than being married? Who is better than a wife? He's saying, who is so true? And egg also. That's another word that you just need to learn. Egg means also. Who's so true and also so attentive? That means you can see it in the word, really. Um, attentive, attentive. Um, to keep him sick and whole. Sick, in this case, it doesn't actually mean sick, it means um, secure, healthy and whole, as is his maka. That's also tricky because it looks like, well, the modern word make, but it actually means meat. So, who who is um, who is as true and attentive and and better at looking after looking after you than your than your mate than your partner than your spouse? He goes on after these rhetorical questions. For well or woe, she wall him not for So for for in for well or for ill. She won't leave him. So he's kind of echoing the marriage vows there in sickness and in health. She nis not worry him to love and serve. Doch that he li bedred tel till he sterve. So she won't. Um, there's a double negative again here. She also likes these, but she she's she's not tired. She won't tire. She is not. You can see that word weary there. Um, she won't tire of, uh, or she won't tire of him, or of loving and serving him. Though, e and, and again, it's not for the first time, though meaning not though, but if. Even if um, he lies bedred, bed, bed, bedridden, you can see that word there, bedridden, bedridden as in stuck in bed, ill, till he starve, so until he starves. So even if he spends the rest of his life in bed, ill, she won't tire of, of loving him and serving him. Goodness, so it it's a bit OTT, it's a bit over the top, and of course the merchant is, is being ironic. Um, okay, I'm going to stop this video there, and we'll start um, we'll start the next video with his with his counter argument. So just to recap, um, we've we've had no I'm actually I'm not going to am I going to do that I'm going to carry on sorry for the uh, sorry for the confusion we're going to carry on here um so as you it's just the nature of this text it's so rambling that it can be difficult to see the structure and and um, it's 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 tricky when um, I'm putting these videos together. Um, so we're going to go on for a bit longer. For well or for well, um, she, she won't forsake him. Um, and yet some clerk is saying. So here he introduces a counter argument, a different position. Um, and yet some clerk is saying, some, some men say, it is not so. Or which he, Theophraste, is on or though. So some people say the opposite. And Theophrastus is one of these. What force though, Theophrasta Listelie? But what's what's the point in listening to Theophrastus? Uh, and then he quotes Theophrastus. Ne tak no if, quod he. He said, take no wife, for husbandry, as for to spare in hushold the dispense. Um, don't take a wife for for husbandry. Uh, so don't, yeah, don't take a wife for 
um, husbandry is kind of housekeeping. Um, don't take a wife um, as for to spar in hus household. So don't to, to look after your your property. A true servant doth more diligence the good to keep than the own with. So a true servant is more hard working. Um, the good to keep good as in uh, your your goods your 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 property. So a true servant is going to be better at looking after your stuff than a wife. For she will climb half um, half part I'll hear a lift she'll claim well half of your stuff all her life and if that though if that thought be sick in this case that does mean sick if that thought be sick so God may serve the very very frienders or a true another will keep they bet that she that waiteth I after the good and hath done many a day so if you if you're sick god help me i'm just being rhetorical there your friends your your very friends or a, a true neighbor just a a, a neighbor well a, a a bloke um a knave is usually disparaging so even a sort of not a, not desperately trustworthy bloke will, will keep they keep look after will look look after the bet better than than your wife who um wateth who who waiteth always who's always waiting after the good um meaning f she's waiting for your to inherit your goods she's waiting to inherit your your wealth uh, and and hath done many a day and and has always has, has done that for a long time and if thou tack a whiff unto thin hold, full lichtly mayst thou bane a cuckold. So if you take a wife, full lichtly, very easily, very quickly, you mayst, mayst thou, mayst thou, may you, very easily may you become bane, be or become a cuckold. If you take a wife, very easily you will become a cuckold and a cuckold is a man whose whose wife has been unfaithful and has slept with another man or other men plural okay that's what theophrastus has to say and the merchant now dismisses this but again he's being ironic all the time uh, this is a second de and here begins a second general declaration in praise of wives and this time he's sketching out the material benefits of being married in more detail and this time I am going to stop there I'm going to stop at the end of Theophrastus and we'll pick up in the next